right. I'm Deidre Willard, an editor over at Million Acres, and I'm here today with Anthony Carino. He's probably best known to viewers as part of HGTV's Kitchen Cousins and other popular shows. He recently joined forces with venture-backed Welcome Homes, which is the first online platform to buy and build a newly constructed home. So as the VP of design at Welcome Homes, he's responsible for offering customers exterior and interior design options. And in addition to his role at Welcome Homes, he runs a digital series on YouTube called The Build, which is really fantastic. And it's focused on teaching homeowners how to successfully execute a home renovation. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start off by talking kitchens, because I feel like the open kitchen is maybe over. Uh, you know, we've been cut, truck, stuck in a pandemic. Things are changing in our homes. What are you seeing in terms of kitchens? Yeah. Um, so at least for me and from from my design perspective, I hope the open kitchen is not over. Um, I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I still love it. Uh, and I think it really works well in the home. You know, what, <laughs> I always say, you know, the kitchen is the heart of the home is the most cliched saying mm-hmm. when it comes to homes. But it's that way for a reason, because it's the truth. And when you think of the kitchen as the hub of the home, do you really want it segmented off on its own and whoever the person is or people that are in that kitchen, they don't get to be a part of whatever else is going on in the home. So for me, for my money, uh, I'm an open kitchen guy. Well, I hope eventually we'll all get to entertain again because the kitchen is always fantastic when you've got an open kitchen and people gather around. I finished my firehouse renovation and did not even get to have a housewarming party. So mm. believe me when I tell you, I'm dying to be able to have gatherings again. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. So so open kitchens, yes. How about open floor plans in general? We're seeing everybody try to section off for Zoom rooms right now. Is that right. temporary? A hundred percent. So is it temporary? I don't think so. No, I don't think necessarily because COVID will continue. But I think we have, because of COVID, we have found this new normal Um, which is people are just as productive at home as they are in the office. I think corporate America has realized that letting people plan their day the way they see fit so long as things get done works and they get to not spend quite as much money on, uh, on corporate real estate. So that's a different issue, I guess, for a different conversation. (laughs) But suffice it to say, I think that a a headquarters, if you will, will still exist. I just think it's going to be able to be smaller. You're going to be able to, you know, you know, go in certain days a week. So I think the work from home environment will continue for the foreseeable future. That said, when I think about home, so I always have this convert, this answer, or, or when I have this particular conversation in two parts, because People who live in cities and apartments have one answer and people who live in suburbs and homes have another answer. When you have enough square footage and have multiple rooms, there is no reason you can't have an open concept part of your home and closed concepts part of your home, right? You have bedrooms that are closed off, bathrooms that are closed off. You can have an office. Um, It depends on how much square footage you're buying. Typically speaking, when you're in an urban environment, you generally don't have that luxury. You're in a one bedroom or a two bedroom. Both of those bedrooms are occupied. Uh, Three bedroom, again, you're occupied. Um, If you're fortunate enough to have a guest room and you can pull double duty, that's great. So in terms of those urban dwellers who can't necessarily find a dedicated space, I'm a big proponent of taking an extra 15 minutes at the top and bottom of your day and really setting up a dedicated workspace, setting your intention for the day so that you're productive. It's one of those things that like, if your laptop's always hanging out by you, you know, one, you're always kind of doing some work on it, but it's never really focused work. And then when's the, when, when is it personal time? So very much like you have to be thoughtful about design and the way you go about laying out a home. I think you have to be thoughtful when it comes to it's time for work and it's time for me to put work away and be with my family or take personal time or whatever it is that thing over here is. Yeah, I think that's totally true. We've just seen such a, it's all been a blur. So it's all just, yeah. everything's just blurred together time, now. Time is no longer a construct that works for me. I, I don't. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so another trend that I've seen too is that people are so much more comfortable now buying things online during the pandemic that they wouldn't have before, like furniture. So we saw like Wayfair, you know, huge year for them because people all of a sudden felt comfortable buying their couch online, which they wouldn't before. Yeah. Do you think people are doing that for design too? Are they are people picking out like tile or countertops without actually seeing them in person? Um. I mean, I know in the design community, I've, I've had a, a number of conversations around this. We're all just ordering a lot more samples. Um, mm. You know, there's no world where I'm not going to touch and feel something that I'm going to be specking for myself or for a client. Um, I think the ability to order things online is fantastic for your home um, from a design perspective. But I would, I would love to see what Wayfair's uh, return and exchange numbers looked like. I, I bet there was a lot of that going on. You know, like I can say, for example, with respect to Welcome Homes and what I'm doing with them, you know, as, as we have customers sign up and go through our online process, once they have made their selections, they're going to get a big, beautiful sample box from us with a bunch of tactile, actual, physical materials countertops, cabinet samples, um, the finishes on your faucets, tiles in your bathrooms, because it's important. Um, screens read at all different color temperatures. Scale is a, is a real thing. So, you know, if you're not hiring a professional designer and you don't have a, a working relationship, a level of trust that's inherent or been built, I, I would suggest that ordering, spending that extra $2, $5, $7, whatever they charge for the sample from whatever website you're looking at, I would recommend doing it. That makes sense. So talk to me a little bit more about your job with Welcome Homes and, and what you're doing in terms of the design aspect. Yeah. So Welcome Homes, um, I got introduced to these guys by someone in my network uh, who was in the startup world. They were looking for um, some some uh, some conversations surrounding construction and design. It's what I've spent my whole career doing. And by my second or third call with uh, Alec Hartman, who's the CEO, I I asked Alec if I could come work for him. That's how much I like <laughs> the company and what they're doing. Um, so we had a, a few very short conversations, and we knew that it was going to be a great uh, a great working relationship. So they brought me on as uh, vice president of design. And that means that I'm basically specking all the pretty things that are going to be going into these homes. So to give people a bit of an idea of, of how uh, welcome, welcome Homes works, um, we're basically the first and only completely online residential home buying tool. So you can go on our website, you can purchase your land if you don't already have it. Uh, now you can also use a standard real estate agent and let us know when you have land. If you already own land, we'll put a house on that for you. But suffice it to say, you have a plot of land or you've selected it from our website, and then you can pick one of our house models, and then you can pick a number of exterior options, kitchen options, bathroom options to really personalize that space for you, along with a whole list of upgrades to really tailor that home to the way that you want to use it. Um, and the idea being here is that building or renovating for that matter, and I say this loving doing my build TV stuff, is a stressful and anxiety ridden process for those that aren't in this business. And that's fair. This is the part that HGTV doesn't tell anybody. You guys aren't like there's no world where you're going to know the level of minutia that's taken me 20 years. I'm still learning every day. Um, and the idea here is to really make it attainable for people to become a home builder in the sense that order your house from us and we will build it for you in six months. You're, we're handing you the keys. Um, and I know that's possible because the size homes we're looking at building, I've done in six months before. It is an achievable thing with good organization and, and an experienced team behind it. And, and Alec and, and the rest of the co-founders certainly know how to put people in positions. Um, we're, we're growing like crazy. Um, and, and yeah, overall, I'm just really, really excited to be a part of the team and, um, and, and, and seeing this whole thing come to fruition. Well, it's, it's kind of an amazing time for, for home builders. I mean, I don't know if you keep an eye on the existing home sales, but the inventory levels are just 
so, so low. I've and never seen it this low, I don't think. Never, never. I've been studying it for years, never been this low. And so there's just so much interest and so much demand for, for home building right now. Partly yeah. there's not inventory out there and partly a lot of people really don't want, want to renovate. Yeah. And, you know, and on top of it, Deidre, I think the other part of this equation that really needs focus is labor. Like it mm -hmm. is hard to get a general contractor these days, especially for a smaller project that's not meant to be derogatory on any scale. But when guys are looking at building a home, a full house versus renovating your bathroom, which one do you think they're going to pick to do? So, you know, it it's 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 difficult all the way around. I mean, I, I think if if you're looking to go buy an existing home, you need to have your ducks in a row. There's no more. Let's grab a coffee and a bagel and cruise around on Saturday and go to open houses. I mean, obviously, COVID aside, but like you can't just go look anymore. Like you've got to be ready to put an offer in. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting up here in the Catskills right now. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to buy this property pre COVID. Um, and just, you know, I was looking for two years with my fiance. A buddy of mine started looking up here three months after we closed. He lost five properties to bidding wars before he was able to get something up in Hudson. So it's it's nuts. It's really nuts. It, it is really nuts. Uh, we, I have a friend who's going through the same process and it's like you have to make the decision in, you know, in almost instantly. You have to walk through the house and, and yeah. decide if you're ready. Yeah. I mean, pr properties in the Catskills were going at one point were going sight unseen. People were buying off of Zillow, um, <laughs> so, which is, you know, which is, again, another I, I think another value proposition that 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 checks in in the favor of welcome homes, because building a home is not a small task. People tend not to think that it's possible. But with us coming into the picture now, this is attainable for folks. So if you really are looking for a home, buying that raw piece of land and wondering, how do I get a septic system on there? How do I dig well water? How do I pave a driveway, clear a lot? You do, you know, footings and foundation. You don't need to worry about that. I worry about that. My team worries about that. Well, you get to worry about the fun stuff. What do you want the outside of the house to look like? What, you know, which kitchen style do you want to pick from? You know, doing the things that, that we love to do when we think about all things home, all those, like I like to call them, all those pretty things um, that, you know, we've really curated so that you don't have this overwhelming sense of, what faucet goes with what backsplash goes with what countertop goes with what cabinetry we've curated kitchen packages that you can say i would like package one or two or three so that you know everything has been thoughtfully decided upon has been designed by a professional designer um and will all work together within your home and any selection you make thereafter will all work with everything else that you've that you've chosen well, you made a really good point there about people wanting to focus on the pretty things because nobody wants to know about the septic. Nobody wants to have to deal with the electrical and the terrible things that can happen there. It's 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 not the fun part. Uh, you know, my my mother always told me I loved to play in the dirt as a kid, and I just don't think I ever grew out of it. I mean, it's just one of those things. I'm a, I've always been a nuts and bolts guy. My mind works in both the the design world and the construction world. I love seeing it on paper and then making it all come into reality. And it's, it's an absolute blast to do it. Um, so yeah, let me handle that part of it for you. Let us, let, let the crew at welcome homes handle that part of it for you. And, and uh, we'll have you in your home in six months. Nice. I wanted to ask you a little bit about construction in general, because one of yeah. the things I've noticed, there's general, you talked about the uh, general contractors, very hard to get them right now. And I've also heard from home builders in general that the aging of the construction of the labor workforce is a problem. Is that something that you've been seeing as well? It's so real. It's not even funny. I mean, I, I, I talked to my GC who's working up here with me, who's a long, long time friend of mine. Um, we talk about this every day. My, this guy has been in business for 25 years. He, he had to take his, his, his ads down for help because he was just throwing money out the window. Um, he'd have people say that they had a whole bunch of experience, come work for him for two weeks, not show up, uh, work for him for a day, not show up. Uh, tile guy I know who's been in the business for 20 years. I called him to come and do my house for me. He's like, Hey man, I, I'm done. Like, it's just not worth it anymore. 
and we're not seeing younger guys fill those shoes. So the, the, the trades is, is a real thing. I mean, I, I've been saying for a long time, the doctors and lawyers of today, those are the plumbers, electricians, and contractors tomorrow. Um, I really encourage anybody who's got the the want or will to work with their hands to really look into it. I mean, it's it's going to be a serious moneymaker for people. And if people don't get into it, I think I think we're going to have a, a very big problem at a certain point. Yeah, I, I would agree with that because it's these are the industries so far. We haven't been able to see technology disrupt. I mean, the way we yeah. build a house is words out of my mouth. Much, yeah, totally. I, I, I so agree with you. I mean, I, and I, I'm a tech tech guy. I love it. I, I joined a startup that's tech focused that, that combines with construction. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're still building in a traditional way. I don't think modular is there yet. I think it's coming. But modular is just a smart use of space. It's not technology in the computer robotics sense. You know, you're, you're building on an assembly line, you're building in a controlled environment, but y- you know, you still need people with real skills to be able to do those jobs. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something I think about a lot. It's something I talk to folks in my network about a lot and it's something I do not have a solution for yet. Yeah, I feel the same way, especially when it comes to plumbing because of the infrastructure problems that we're going to have, you know, in the country as a whole. There's just so much that needs to be done. And we don't seem to be building that next generation who's going to have those ideas when it comes to the built world. Yeah, it's it's um, that's really well said. That's really well said. It's 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 interesting. And it's it's something that, yeah, like I said, I just don't have an answer for. I, I, I stutter on my words with it because it's something I'm very passionate about. I love this industry. I, you know, I, I love working with my hands, um, but it's, it's something you just don't see as many people getting into. Uh, I think it was just that, you know, focus on you got to go to college, you got to go to college and not realizing in the long term what it, what it was going to do to, to the built environment. Yeah, it's very true. So let's pivot a little bit and talk some more about some design trends. Um, I want to talk about closets just because I'm a minimalist, but most people are not. Uh, yeah. We're seeing like the, the, the demand for self-storage keeps going up. I'm seeing more walk-in closets. What are you seeing in terms of space? Yeah, the, the storage units, I just never, I, I, oh, I don't know. I just never got that. I mean, if, if it doesn't fit in the house, what do you, you're never going to go back and decide, oh, I definitely need to put that in my new home. So get rid of it, sell it. There's apps for that now. Yeah. So what do I see in terms of closets? Um, definitely. I mean, walk-in closets are considered a luxury. So when they fit the floor plan, they're always included. Like, hard yes from me. I like it from an organization standpoint. I like, like, for example, my fiance and I share a closet up here um, because it's a large enough closet. So we were able to not have to use more space for less storage, meaning two separate closets and all the additional wall space that that's required when you frame those up um, just eats into your overall floor plan. So for me, I, when I think about closets, I think about how people use their home during the space planning phase of of a project. I also just think about good space planning in general. There's no reason to put closets for closet's sake, but there's no reason to, to not have a larger closet. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to answer in the sense that it's a very personal thing. So I think when it comes to the closet itself, most times when people are buying an existing home, you're stuck with what you have and then you fit the custom closet solution of your choice into what's there. If you're build, if you're building a custom home, then it's completely your choice. I do tend to see people go with larger closets when it's available to them. Interesting. What about pantries? Because all of a sudden I think the, you know, the, the toilet paper, uh, problems of 2020 have, have got everybody suddenly wanting like a bigger pantry. Is that, is that also something that you're seeing with, with the designs that you're looking at? Yeah. So with my designs, I tend to design the pantry into the cabinetry itself because I really like that uniform look and efficient use of space. Mm-hmm. I think a dedicated room in the house for that much food storage, um, it's just a waste of space. That's more of a personal design ethos for myself. If I'm going to go out and buy six cases of toilet paper because of COVID, that's probably going to go in the garage. We're definitely going to go in the garage. Um, so I like to design pantries that are 18 to 24 inches wide, 
um, and have a pull out or have double doors and is part of the cabinetry itself and allows for a nice seamless kitchen experience. I don't like having it as a separate room. How do you feel about the laundry room? Because I've noticed there, there's been the escalation of the laundry room. It used to just be like in the basement or in yeah. a corner somewhere. Now the laundry room is, is this really beautiful space in a lot of homes. The laundry room I'm a big proponent of. That is a great space to have a well-designed space for, not just have it that basement afterthought, as you, as you said so well. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the advancements of the washers and dryers and the technology they're in. So for example, um, you know, with the welcome home stuff, we've got a dedicated laundry room built in and as an upgrade, like you can add a, um, you can add one of the Samsung at home dry cleaning units. So you have a shirt that needs a refresh, but doesn't necessarily need to go in the washer. Or you don't have time to get to the dry cleaner, put it on a hanger, hang it in there, close the door 20 minutes. It, steams and fluffs and freshens and de bacteria, whatever it does. <laughs> but having those, having that um, level of technology and the ability to have all these different appliances at home, coupled with wanting to get the mess out of sight, um, I think, you know, is, is really where you see the, the, the advent of, of the lunchroom. Plus the fact when you have a well thought out laundry room in your space plan, you can get those much closer to the areas that you would want to be doing laundry instead of carrying clothes and sheets, you know, down two flights of stairs into a basement, uh, into a cold area, a damp area. This is now like a nice, condition space close to where things are getting dirty, if you will, to minimize the amount of carrying that you've got to do from here to there. I love that. So in terms of welcome homes, when you're thinking about the outdoor spaces, are are you uh, customizing those to the plot or how does that work? So we, there's a sun deck off the back of, uh, off the, off the back of our Oasis model. Um, and that is a standard size. Any additional landscaping from there is customized to the lot because obviously no two pieces of land are the same. Um, but when we do place the house on the lot, we do take into account a sun study and what is going to be best for positioning that house. Obviously those also have to do with getting approvals from zoning and planning and board of health and, and all the rest of it um, that I'm, I'm sure your viewers and listeners are familiar with who are, who are in the real estate world. Uh, but suffice it to say, we're trying to optimize for sun angle and making a really pleasant experience in that backyard space. One of the things I'm most excited about for the backyard is our kitchen upgrade, which I don't know if you're familiar with this Canadian company called Urban Bonfire. Um, they're my absolute go-to in outdoor kitchens, marine grade powder coated aluminum, all 304 stainless on the legs and any operable hardware, you know, gone are the days where you have to compromise the design of your outdoor kitchen. Meaning as custom as you're used to getting in your house, that's how custom you can get in the backyard now. And I think a lot of that is, is due to these guys. It's, it's really, it's an unbelievable product. Wow. Yeah. That sounds gorgeous. So I noticed that you're, you're, you're caught, we're talking here and you're in the barn of your Catskills place. And I saw that you're going to put that on, uh, on Airbnb. So why don't yeah. you could tell me about that? Is this your first Airbnb? Uh, it will be. Um, when my fiance moved in with me about two years ago now, COVID delayed the wedding. Otherwise, it, anyway, uh, <laughs> she moved in with me two years ago now. Uh, she had a condo of her own in Jersey City and we were deciding what to do with that. And I said, you know, why don't we test it on Airbnb and see how it goes? So we had it up there for about a month before she got a long term tenant that um, that had a nice price tag attached to it. So we'd be foolish not to take it. But the lesson there was it, it went really, really well. Um, as long as you're diligent about communication and you set yourself up for success, meaning you have a good cleaning company that you can call for quick turnarounds, you utilize technology in the right way. Um, by that, I mean, like I'm a big fan of the Schlegen code um, door locks. You don't, the, the, the people from Airbnb, the people who are Airbnb in your property don't need to put an app on their phone. It's a four digit pin. You can set it to be like the last four digits of their, uh, of their cell phone number. So they don't forget it. These are little stupid things that I like to focus on for personalization and for 
the avoidance of having of, of having them to have to contact me. Um, but it went really well in the Catskills. I mean, the market is on fire for Airbnbs. And if you can stay in a traditional barn with a Gambrel roof that was built in 1965, that was just newly renovated. I mean, we're really excited to get this up on the website and, and, and see what it does. So just as soon as I get the stone house done, we'll, we'll be getting this thing live. So the Stone House, you're, 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 uh, that's on uh, Build TV on, on YouTube. And I've noticed you kind of going through some of the, the different design decisions and everything like that. Um, wondering uh, if you could talk about how you made some of those decisions. And is that property going to be for you to live in or is that another investment property? Yeah. So the Stone House is very much our mountain retreat. I've been coming to the Catskills for over a decade. It's my happy place. We go hiking. Uh, we have a dog who loves to run and chase every animal that pops its head out of uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the field next, uh, next door to us. Um, so yeah, it's very much for uh, peace of mind, uh, on the, on the weekends up here. Um, as far as design decisions, you know, I've, I've been in this business for a little over 20 years now. Um, and through that time, you just, you use a lot of product. Um, you use stuff that you really love. You use stuff you wish you never found. Um, and you know, the, both the firehouse, which was season one of the build and now the stone house, these are tried and true products that I know and love that are both high, high quality in terms of their craftsmanship and how long they're going to last me and cost of ownership as well as their aesthetic value, how beautiful they are in the home, how much they speak to me and my fiance, um, you know, how we use our home, how we cook, how we interact, how we entertain. Um, so, you know, when, when I select Kohler as my fixtures or I choose, um, you know, Mila for appliances, um, you know, this comes with 20 years of when it's my turn to do my home, this is what I'm putting there. When it's my turn to do my home, this is what I'm putting over there. And, you know, one of the, one of the best parts about that for me, just to pivot back to welcome again, is that I get to do the same thing with these guys. Now I have 20 years of experience, like I just said, with all these products. And instead of someone having to go out and hire a designer and figure all this stuff out for themselves, I am specking a lot of the stuff that are my tried and trues, the things that I would put in my home that I have put in my home so that people can have real peace of mind that they're buying a quality home when they work with us. Um, so it's really interesting how I think I've, I've just been looking back and reflecting a lot lately because obviously going to welcome homes is a, is a new chapter for me and, you know, having my own construction development firm with my father to, tripping into HGTV and the Ellen show, starting the build TV and now coming here, how each chapter builds on the one before and how you never really realize that until you're in the next thing. You're always just kind of thinking about like, what is next? What am I going to do? How, you know, how am I going to make things work? Um, and then, you know, you trip into a, to a company that's doing great things like this and, and your skill set is perfectly suited and, and you can really put it to use for, for a lot of people's benefit. So I'm really excited about that. I, I love that. I feel like that's very true for a lot of people and also for a lot of investors, you know, real estate investors sort of t tend to go from one project to another and you never know how the lessons you learn on one are going to impact the next a one. hundred percent. Oh my God. I remember 2008, I cut the ribbon on my largest project ever, 37,000 square feet, uh, 22 condominium units and a, uh, 14 parking spaces and a commercial unit. The day Lehman went under. Oh, <laughs> I, I, we had $7 million loan out with a bank and 22 condos we had to sell. This whole gray side of the beard is dedicated to that <laughs> those two years. Uh, um, <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, you, you look back and you're like, oh my God, like you, every time a lesson comes back from that time, I know it immediately. I said, ah, I know what, I know what's going on here. I'm, I'm taking a right. I'm not going left. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how those things keep coming back around, keep coming back around. 
<laughs> well, awesome. As we wrap up, what advice would you give to real estate investors, maybe who are starting out on, on their first flip or their first uh, buy and hold rental property? So flip is a dirty word to me. Um, there's a connotation that things are not done uh, to a level of quality. Mm -hmm. uh, being fast does not mean that you're not doing things with quality. It just means that you're organized and you've got your ducks in a row. Um, that's more semantics than anything else. As far as advice, um, you know, where when you work with a private client, design is very personal and you're really focused on that client. Um, you're trying to speak to a broader audience. So, you know, if you're not in a situation like Welcome Homes where people can choose their their level of finish on the website and you've got to produce something that you want someone to move into, I would stay with very, um, very neutral tones. You want to be in your whites and grays. Um, you know, as much as it pains me to tell people to use less color and take less chances and be less bold, that's really what you want to do when you're speaking to, to that many people, uh, especially from a rental standpoint, you don't know what people want when they're going to move in. And if they don't have the ability to choose it, you've got to, you've got to go with what most people like. Good advice. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, just a reminder to anyone watching, you can catch season two of The Build on YouTube and check out the Welcome Homes online home builder at welcomehomes.com. Thanks so much for all your time. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.